Watch the entire video my lovely viewers, I mean from start to finish, to get the whole thing. Without wasting much of your time, let's get right into it. Hi lovely viewers, it's me again, your one and only Mtati Mpundu. Welcome to my YouTube channel. If this is your first time on my channel, kindly subscribe to my YouTube channel by hitting the red subscribe button down below and turn the bell icon to join the notification squad. Don't forget to like, share and leave a comment. Tell me what you think about this video in the comment section below. I'll be super glad to hear from you lovely viewers. So quickly, we I want to go into the reason why I'm here. It's, it's, it's not going to be it's not going to be it's not going to be too uh, too long i don't want you usually when i when i come live at this time at this hour usually in the day uh, i i don't expect so many of you to leave your work on what you are doing to join me it's just that i use this opportunity to educate my people i use this opportunity to speak to my people and open the eyes of my Africans. So today, uh, something I've already posted on my page. I've already posted something on my page <coughs> about the preaching. You can go and watch it. We have a, a problem in Africa, a very, very big problem in Africa. And uh, that problem started from religion and migrated to politics and from politics it has gone to IMF the people that received religion on behalf of Africans we are not able to ask questions if I was there when they brought religion to me, the religion to us in Africa, there were many questions that I was going to ask. But unfortunately, they received the religion and they ran with it. Others ran with Christian religion. Others ran with a, a, a Muslim and so on and so forth. All religion. When that uh, happened, politics came in. Now, the people that received politics in Africa did not ask questions. Especially democracy. They did not ask questions. They accepted it and they ran with it. Now, this is exactly what has happened with the IMF. If you are a country in Africa and your country is dealing with IMF, you are totally dependent on IMF. Very soon, you are going to eat stone. IMF, this is a group of many people who say Africans are there. Uh, it's a collective thing. Africans are not there. Africans that are there are like vice presidents. You know that vice presidents are like a statue. They don't have a say. They just stand and say, yes, my yes, sir. Yes, boss. They don't have a say on anything. That is the situation and the position of Africa and at IMF. So IMF was meant to help us. Amazonia say, Chibesa, I say, see, I want we love you here in Zambia. I love you more. You know, I don't even need to tell you that I love Zambia. Everyone that knows C1 know that I love Zambia. There is no country on earth that I love more than I love Zambia. So IMF came. Their duty, they came with a very good package. Very, very wonderful package. Very, very good package. And that package is that any country that wants money, we are going to borrow them that money. We are going to lend them money. We'll give them money. They invest the money. 
and give us back our money, which is very, very good, which is very, very wonderful. We, this is uh, Nigeria or Zambia. Zambia, I have more Zambians watching than Nigeria. So this is Nigeria, this is Zambia. We have a budget. We say we want to build an airport, but we don't have money. The duty of IMF is to give us money to build that airport. And when we recover that money, we give to them. Now, see where the problem came. See where we have a great person. I'm watching you from Livingstone, Professor. God bless you. <clears throat> see where the problem came. When I want to borrow money from you, you that is watching me, you that is watching me now, there are thousands of people that are watching me. I want to borrow money from you. What do you do? As somebody that wants to lend the money to me, what do you do? You must first of all check my background to know whether if you give me that money, will I be able to pay you back? That is why in many cases, the people that are lending money to you, the people that give you money, they ask for collateral. They will first of all check who is this person that we are giving this money to. If I'm not qualified, if in my record I am a criminal, if in my record I misuse money, if in my record I abuse money, what does IMF do? IMF say, no, we are not going to give you the money. Are you following? If I come to you to say, give me money, maybe give me one million dollars. First of all, you must look at my record. Have I ever handled a million dollars before? Okay, if someone gave me one million dollars before, what did I do with it? Are you following? This is the duty of IMF. This is the duty of IMF. Before they give out money to anybody, they're supposed to examine who is this person. But to show you that IMF don't mean well for Africa. See, I want to go deeper. Chipata is watching you. This is from Cephas. God bless you. To show you that IMF don't mean well for Africa. IMF knows that African leaders are criminals. Majority of them, they are criminals. They are thieves. They know that African presidents, majority of them, are thieves. Now, an African president or African government goes to IMF and says, please, we have a budget of 8 million US dollars. Borrow us 8 million US dollars. They know, they have the record of that president that is a criminal. They know that he is going to loot that money. What does IMF do? Because they already know. They have checked his background. They know that this guy is a criminal. If we give him this money, he will embezzle the money. He will steal the money. All of a sudden, they carry the money and give to him. You know, Nigeria lost a cup of nation the other day. Many people came online. You blasted me. Yeah, see one. How you say you are powerful? How can you be there? Nigeria lose a cup. Cup. See one. Why you see for other people? You can't see for your country. I was happy because that we lost that game. Because we are going to receive over 8 million US dollars. If Nigeria won the Cup of Nation, CAF was going to give us over 8 million US dollars. Can I tell you something? Only few people in Nigeria, few criminals will share that money. I'm not going to benefit. So why must I pray? Why must I be happy? Because Nigeria has won election. You hear that your president has borrowed 5 million US dollars. You hear it. You don't know where the money has gone. That is the work of IMF. IMF does not mean well for Africa. IMF want to destroy Africa. IMF will not give that money to the right people. They will always give the money to the wrong people. So that you fail to pay it. 
Are you following where we are going? IMF, IMF, IMF. Any president that depends on IMF, any president that is good in good books with an IMF, fear that president. They don't mean well. So what do they do? Your president go to him, to them, and say, oh, we need $8 million to build this. They know that that your president is a criminal. They know that that your president is a looter. He loots. They carry that money and give to him. Why did they give that money to him? Because they know that he will loot that money and not invest that money in your country, but he will carry the same money that he borrowed and take it back to them in Switzerland, where there is offshore accounts. That money was lent to a country, your country, my country. One person or two people have looted it. They have not invested it in Africa. But they have taken it outside the country. That is why you see African presidents. They are billionaires and trillionaires. But tell me their investment in your country. I mean, tell me. You see that these guys are billionaires. In my country here in Nigeria, we have um, a former president. His investment, his house in Dubai is an estate. You can drive for almost 10 minutes. You have not finished. I mean, you have not gone from edge to edge. His estate in Dubai. You're, you have a president. When he is sick, he enters the plane and fly to go and treat himself abroad. But he has much more money that he can invest in the country. But it's not in the country. He has looted it. The same money that IMF gave to him, he has looted it. And he has taken it back to them. Another president will come in power, go to IMF, borrow that money, loot it, and send it back to them. Another one will come, go to them, borrow the money, loot it, and send it back to them. Now, what happens? In the long run, what happens? You discover that it doesn't concern them. The rich are never affected. If you say one liter of petrol is costing 1,000 US dollars, the rich will not cry because it doesn't concern them. The poor will suffer. The poor will die. How much is a bag of rice in your country? How much is a liter of petrol in your country? How much are the food cooking oil in your country? You know it because you are poor. The rich don't care. Because they have looted enough. They have enough. They don't care. When the stomach is full, when you talk about what is happening outside, people don't know. That is why I laugh at... Uh, <coughs> I was laughing at HH the other day. Though this is... I'm not here to do politics. Uh, <laughs> the politics I did last Tuesday, I was testing the microphone. I was trying to check what is going to happen when campaign begins. And the reason why I did it is because I wanted to prove to people. People say, ah, see, one does not have following. Again, people don't want to hear, people don't care about Sia one. You know, Sia one has lost influence in Zambia. He cannot even pull 1,000. So when I'm talking ministry or when I'm, I'm speaking for Africa like this during the day they see like now for three point three point five people are watching. Oh, see one has lost <laughs> see one I see because I, I have not started politics. If I do politics last night the last broadcast unannounced over eleven thousand people turned in. 
The first day I fought a Digalungu, the first, first day I fought a Digalungu, on my Facebook page, I was having 80,000 followers. And that day, I had 2,000 people that watched. The foundation of that fight, to only 2,000 people watched. And those days, many of you don't, didn't even know Sia One. Many of you began to know Sia One because I fought a Digalungu. If not, you didn't know who Sia One is. Even when I was deported from Zambia, many of you didn't know that somebody like Sia One existed in Zambia. So imagine, with, the, with that less popularity, I managed to do what I did in Zambia. What happens now? That was 80,000 followers. Now there is over 1 million followers. I was just testing the microphone. <laughs> I, just, I wanted to see. I just gave an example. And you can see that uh, actually UPND, I feel pity for them. I, I feel pity for them. Yesterday I was very happy when uh, the former police inspe assistant inspector was sent to jail. Uh, what is his name? Uh, uh, what is her name? Charity. Charity was sent to uh, Oh, Mili Beauty Product, how are you? God bless you. Watching from Zambia. So I was I was laughing. I was laughing. Yesterday I was very happy. I saw how uh, that woman was convicted. Though the conviction was not... Uh, to me, that was not a conviction. Three years is nothing. And I'm told that she, she has appealed. The next person that will convict her now must make it ten years. Because... That was a lot of money that she stole. I, I know people that are serving 10 years for stealing just nothing. You know, I know people that are that are doing five, six years for stealing nothing. But that was a very big thing. So the next person that we review the judgment must make it 20 years. But the reason why I'm happy is because UPND must be seeing themselves from the president to his ministers to permanent secretaries, they must be warming up as well to enter there. I was very happy. So why I, I did that live broadcast? I didn't come out fully for politics. Before I come out fully for politics, I must bring you a president. I must have a president that I'm going to support. You understand what you are saying? I'm not like uh, all these other people who like to make noise. Yeah, 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 yeah. No. I'm not like these people who call every prophet a charlatan. I'm not like that. When I tell you that this one is not good, I must point you to another one as an option. I can't just come and start fighting, start politics, when I have no one to point to say, okay, this one has failed, go here. So we are waiting for the opposition to round up and bring a candidate. Now, to you, me and you, I have seen so many... UPN press singers who, who were busy challenging me, insulting me. Look, uh, you must, by now, you should know that I survive with insult. I like insult. Without, without insult, I'm not going anywhere. You must know that I survive with a war. Without a war, I'm not going anywhere. I, I survive with catastrophe. When there, if there is peace, I don't have, I don't feel well. War, problem, is what I like. Violence is my food, is what I like. So, I've seen uh, some few UPND uh, press singers who have been given small, small changes, small, small food, small, small thing here and there, making noise. Ah, see, I want, we are ready to take you on. We are ready to take you on. <laughs> <laughs> when you go live, you have 11 people watching you, 10 people watching you, 14 people watching you, highest 100 people watching you. You are ready to take on a person that tested the microphone and 11,000 people watched him. 
<laughs> Are you mad? <laughs> no, you will take me on. Wait, I'm just waiting for the opposition to have candidates. There must be a president that must assure me and assure the people of Zambia that when I come, this will happen, that will happen. And that person must be scrutinized. When that person comes, then I'm going to tell you this is the person I'm going to support. And once I start supporting that person, whether you like it or not, it's gone through. Because politics is a psychological game. It's not an emotional game. <laughs> you are so... The problem with UPND praise singers, they are so emotional. But you, you must look behind. How did we get here where we are? This is not emotional game. If you follow politics with emotional, you will die before your time. <laughs> it's a psychological game. <laughs> this is what I do. This is what I was born for, politics. Ministry, I'm doing it to help people. But what gives me peace is politics. And I study it very well. I can, I can tell you now the weaknesses of UPND. Where we are, I can, I can tell you. I can analyze it to you now. Then you see. It's not that I don't want to go there because opposition don't have the. There is no candidate yet that they are presented to us. I believe before the end of this month, they would have concluded and give us somebody. And Kwasila will take over. I'm telling you, you can, you can, you, you, we can be here. We argue. I argued with PF. PF had rich opposition and um, rich guys. I mean, PF had they they could go all around buying data for people to insult me. They created thousands upon thousands of fake accounts insulting me when I'm live. But I was laughing because when I tell you that this will happen, take it like that. So I fought them and defeated them. Like now, UPND is working with uh, Chama America. Actually, one of the things that is bringing war between me and this guy, these guys, is because Chama America was one of the people that sponsored snipers to come and shoot me in Limpopo, South Africa. The government of Nigeria is aware of this. The, the, the empty cartridges that were shot at me in my house, they saw it when the Nigerian government sent representative to come and tell me to stop fighting Eddie Galungu. I presented everything to them. And I told them to say, unless Eddie Galungu goes and, uh, and, and apologize on public television, I'm not going to stop and he's going to lose. And that's what happened. So the Chama America that is a darling to the UPND today with his mouse and so on, was among the people that sponsored people to come and kill me in Limpopo. It's among the people that came to kill me in Limpopo. They shot at me several times. That Chama America that you are seeing. So these are some of the people that are supposed to be in prison now. They are not in prison. They are moving freely. They are actually causing havoc, insulting the president, insulting the past president, insulting past leaders. If you go to all the groups, I belong to so many Zambian groups on WhatsApp. I mean, a lot of them. Anywhere you see them, they are always insulting and insulting and insulting. These are the guys that are supposed to be in prison. But they are not in prison. They are moving freely. They are moving freely. So this is where the problem started. Somebody will not just wake up and say, ah, see, I want to hate HH. There is no one that loves HH as much as I do. I took bullet for him. You know, it's just that uh, now, uh, you see, when you, when, you, when you get into power, your brain is no longer, you don't think properly again. So there are people now, you can see somebody, this one who came yesterday, uh, 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 Father Frank Walia, and so on and so forth. They have, they have all come, they have all joined. They, they, they are now eating. But the people that did the fight, the people that took the bullet, are not eating. You, you, here we are, we are talking, here where we are now, we are, we are broadcasting. 
I can tell you that 90% of people that worked for UPND are hungry. And they are all here. They are all waiting for me to give them direction. 90% of them, they are hungry, including the musicians. The other day, I was asking them, what are you doing for the musician? Look at this guy, uh, uh, Kevman. Look at Kevman. Eh? What are you doing? No, we, are build, we want to build a house for Kevman. Or we are building a house for Kevman. Okay, how about others? That we are hundreds of musicians, knack units. All these guys need empowerment. What have you done for them? You abandon them. You have money to send Chishimbakamburi outside the country. How about the people that fought for you? This is where my war started with. I didn't just wake up and say, HH, I hate you. HH, I will fight you. HH himself know that all these people that are making noise, all these people that are talking, there is none of them that loves him as much as I love him. Because I was going to die because of him. I was shot at. I'm telling you, Nigerian government is my witness. They sent representatives several times. If I didn't have protection, if I was not protecting myself, I used to sleep in my house with a gun. I used to sleep in my house with a gun. Just to make sure that HH becomes the president. So if somebody woke up today and say, Ah, HH, see, I want, don't love you, and he believe, then it means it's not wise. The reason why we are now saying that he must go is because the, I mean, intruders have taken over leadership in Zambia. They have taken over powers. So instead of us to watch intruders destroy Zambia, PF was a very good part. I remember when Sata was alive, we were the one that was giving advice. Eddie Gangoma is alive today. He is he was the one of the aides for Sata. He will tell you we are the one that we are giving advice. We we are the ones that we are running things for him. And everything was going well. Because the people that are just joining you now that you have won election can never have an understanding of what people that came from you, from dust, have. Or what they go through. Or what people go through. You talk about cadres, 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 cadres. We removed PF because of cadres. We removed PF because of cadres. The leader of the cadres is no longer a PF member. Kelvin Sampa is there in Kasama. He was the, the, the youth chairperson of PF. He was the one that was arranging cadres to kill people. Arranging cadres to stop people. Arranging cadres to destroy things. Where is he today? He has gone to UPN. As we speak today, there is no single cadres left in PF. I can assure you. He went there with all his cadres. Okay. Immediately we won the election. The minister of Copperbet was appointed. What did he do? Because he's a corrupt criminal. I'm coming. You see, I'm not doing politics. Please don't be offended that many of you join me, especially those that have joined, that have joined me from outside Zambia. You came, you want to hear a message for Africa, and then you hear me talking about this. I'm just touching it here. I've not started. Politics has not started. Politics will start when oppositions. Fred Member is the president of Socialist Party. Oka need to give us a president. Uh, president Harry Kalaba. All these guys, everyone must come together. Everyone must come together. And they will give us one person. When that person is given, then we'll start politics. I'm not doing politics now. This is DJ Mutati exclusive. Savage. All right, that's all right for you today, lovely viewers. If you did enjoy the video, please don't forget to leave a comment in the comment section below. Tell me what you think about the video you just watched in the comment section below. I'll be super glad to hear from you, lovely viewers. 
Once again, I go by the name of Mutatim Pondum. I love you. Peace. I gotta go.